The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Experiencing the plays, great performances, and compelling stories each week from the archives of great productions of Hollywood's best producers and actors. We now go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations with our featured drama presentation. Kill the Pharaoh. A thriller serial in eight episodes by Victor Pemberton. Released by her brother, Elizabeth Warwick returns to Inspector Mahmoud and tells him the secret of the Hashak tomb. Her father believed it to contain the burial chamber of a pharaoh, full of treasures equal to those of Tutankhamun. Together, Mahmoud and Elizabeth enter the tomb, and in it they find a body. But it is not the corpse of the dead pharaoh. Kill the pharaoh. Episode 7, When the Dervish Begins to Dance. Do you know this man, Miss Warwick? Yes. Yes, it's Abdullah. It was his house I went to in the village of Hazia, soon after I came to Luxor. And for some reason, he's been threatening me ever since. Abdullah! But why? Why should anyone want to do a dreadful thing like this? And then just to leave him here in the sarcophagus, it... Oh, it's horrible. Can you tell me for how long he has been dead? I should say for no more than an hour. The body's still quite warm. He has two knife wounds in the back, and one must have pierced the heart. But how did he get in here? The same way as us, through the Coptic caves? I think we are not the first to reach this chamber, dear lady. Nor was Abdullah. You mean someone was waiting down here for him? Perhaps. But now we have found one body. We must look for another. The pharaoh? You think it's been stolen, the mummy? Look around you, dear lady. Do you think at one time this was the resting place of a great king? I don't know. Everything's so bare. Oh, it's big enough, all right, but the walls look exactly the same as the main entrance hall. You know as well as I do that there's hardly a tomb in the Valley of the Kings that wasn't found to be heavily decorated and was once full of royal treasures. Yes. And again, this extraordinary lack of hieroglyphics on the walls, the ceilings, even on the... Inspector, quick, come and look at this. What is it? Oh, shine the torch a little lower. Yes. It, it, it's a cartouche. I thought so. Do you recognize it? Yes, I recognize it all right. Then you know the dynasty. Which pharaoh? Not a pharaoh, Inspector. This is the ancient mark of the assassin. What? Don't you see? This proves what I said was right. That fresco in the Temple of Luxor, the hunter. The arrow pointing at the pharaoh's back. This pharaoh, whoever he was, was assassinated. Of course, that is why the tomb is not complete. And why his family had to find a way of keeping his enemies from desecrating his remains. Which means, if the passage leading from the Coptic caves is, is one side of a triangle, and this chamber is the point of that triangle, Somewhere there must be a connecting door which leads to... To the main entrance hall. A door which can only be opened from this side of the chamber. As soon as possible, we must call the Department of Antiquities. I think Dr. Forzad is going to have some little shock. So now, all we have to do is find a pharaoh and his treasures. Where do we look, Miss Warwick? Where do we look? I wish I knew, Inspector. Believe me, I don't. You are the ones who have discovered the Hashak tomb, dear lady. You and your father. Now, you must accept what is to follow. Follow? What are you talking about? A pharaoh sleeps for two, maybe three thousand years. Now, he is awake. He is awake and the world must know. Miss Warwick! Miss Warwick! Miss Warwick! Is it true your father knew how to reach the king's tomb? Uh, Miss Warwick, uh, are you going to cooperate with the Egyptian authorities? Please, gentlemen, let me get to my room. Can you tell us the name of the pharaoh? Are you going to be allowed to leave the country? Please, let me pass. Miss Warwick! Miss Warwick! Over here! Oh, Mr. Wilder! Uh, what a little mess you seem to have got yourself into. Look, give me your hand, please. 
Where are we going? Don't ask questions, just follow. Right you are, gentlemen. Would you make way, please? Do you mind getting out of the way? Let us pass. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I was going to be lynched. Think yourself lucky you weren't. Fell out for your blood. Well, if you're going to start nagging... A man's him. body was found in that chamber and you had to be the one to lead the police straight to it. And what's that supposed to mean? That I was the one who murdered him? Oh. I think you're forgetting, Mr Wilder, that I'm a doctor. I don't take lives, I save them. But you can't deny you knew exactly how to get into that tomb. Oh, don't be absurd. My father had a theory and I made it work. What's so wrong about that? Well, I'm warning you, Miss Warwick, that you're going to have quite a few answers to give and not only to the authorities here in Luxor. Once the state security people hear about these reports out there, we're in for trouble. I think international relations are your problem, Mr Wilder, not mine. I'm no diplomat, even if that is what you're supposed to be. What I am is nothing to do with you, Miss Warwick. Just think of me as, well... A friend. Look, Mr. Wilder, I've been up half the night out of that tomb. Just tell me what you want me to do. You can start by telling me what has happened to Lieutenant Brian Barclay. Who? A few hours ago, Mrs. Villers came to see me. She told me that she and her husband are the parents of a Lieutenant Brian Barclay, a deserter from the British Army. He was in the same regiment as your brother. So? Yesterday afternoon, Mr. Villers, together with a man called Pringle, went up into the Theban hills to look for his son. They have not returned. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about it. Then you've made no sort of contact with this Lieutenant Barclay? Absolutely not. Why should I? I don't know. All I'm saying is that if you have, you'd be well advised to tell me about it. You see, it's no longer just a question of a court-martial. The Harshak tomb has been robbed of pharaonic treasures. And I don't think I have to remind you that in this country an offence like that is punishable by law. Do I make myself clear, Miss Warwick? So, dear lady, now you tell us your name is Mrs. Bartley, not Villiers. Is that correct? Yes. But for why have you kept this secret? I was scared. If you caught up with my son, he'd have been sent straight back to a court-martial in England. I love my boy, Inspector. I'd do anything to try and persuade him to give himself up. Of course. Mrs. Bartley, this man who called himself Pringle, what do you know of him? I've never met him before we came to Luxor, but he seems to have been out here for quite a long time. He is English? Oh, yes. Did you know that this Pringle was also in the British Army, in the same regiment as your son? What? A corporal, I believe. But he never told us. You are sure? Well, of course. Then he must have known all along. All this time, he's let us suffer. Ahmed Arabi, you took Miss Elizabeth Warwick in your boat to the village of Hazia on the first day she was in Luxor. Uh, yes, Inspector. Did you know that this man Pringle was also in the same village that day? Ahmed! No! No, I did not see this man. But you did know that the village was in flood? Yes, but... And that the people had left it because of the typhoid sickness. But, but, but Miss Warwick made me go. I did not want Mr. to go. Mr. Pringle was not the only person to wait for this lady in the village of Hazia. Ahmed Arabi, I am going to ask you a question and I want for you to give me a correct answer. Do you know the man who have called himself Abdullah? Yes. He was my friend. He did not wish to harm the English lady. He was the only man in the village who wanted to protect her. Now, he's dead. Two people have died in the fire at the house of Abdullah. Yes. Name them. One was brother of Abdullah. And the other? I want to know. Very well, Ahmed Arabi, I will tell you. The other man in the fire was the son of Abdullah. The boy we had made to think was Fuad Yassif. The boy who was really killed in the car crash in the valley one month ago. Alive? My dear young brother. lady, do you realize what you're saying? I tell you, my brother Michael is alive. I've seen him with my own eyes. I wish I hadn't. Because he's changed. He's become nothing more than a sadistic bully, an animal. But if he changed identity with his other young officer, what made him come down to Luxor? The Harshak tomb. 
He knew there was money to be made there, but he daren't come as Sir Richard Warwick's son. You mean he's been working out at that tomb all this time, completely unnoticed? Well, it was quite easy, wasn't it? After all, the authorities just left the place to rot. And now he's got hold of the Pharaoh's mummy and probably all the treasures with it. Yes, but even if he does have the mummy, surely it's no good to him until it's been identified. You said yourself all the hieroglyphics have been defaced. All except for one small cartouche on the side of the sarcophagus. Cartouche? Inscribed with the ancient mark of the assassin. This pharaoh was murdered, Mr. O'Hara, there's no doubt about that. But if I could just get a glimpse of that coffin, or even of the bindings, I know I could work out which dynasty it came from. You could do that? Well, I'm sure I could. All right, Elizabeth. Uh, what do you want to do? First of all... Tell me what you know about the dervishes. Dervishes? Well, just before I was forced into another of my pleasant little dreams, I overheard Michael say something about the dance of the dervishes. Now, if I could only find out where and when this dance was going to take place... The village of the White Scorpion, Hazia. Hazia? They've been practising the dervish rites up in that village for years. The police have never been able to do anything about it. But do you know anything about this dance? When the next one's going to take place? Yes. Tonight. Tonight? Oh, that means we'll have to go up there. Go there? My dear child, are you out of your mind? Have you any idea what these devils are like? They're religious fanatics. They cut you to pieces. We've got to take the chance. We can't let Michael get away with that fortune. Leave it to the police, Elizabeth. For heaven's sake, don't get involved. It's no use, Mr. O'Hara. I have no choice. Whatever I like to think, Michael is still my brother. I've got to try and save what little there is left of his conscience. Yes, I know, but... Mr. O'Hara, at this moment, I feel as though you're the only one I can really trust. Because you respected my father. So if you feel you're not able to do this for me, then will you do it for him? I'll pick you up at your hotel at sunset. Mathematics. Yes, gentlemen. Yes, that is an interesting conclusion. As you can see by this diagram, the Harshak tomb has been designed geometrically. Dr. Fawcett, now that you have seen this new chamber, can you estimate the period of the tomb? Oh, very difficult. But to judge from the evidence, one can only assume that it is somewhere around maybe 16th or 17th dynasty. But in your opinion, the tomb was built to hold the remains of a pharaoh. Well, a pharaoh, his queen, a nobleman, who can tell? The only thing that is now clear is that the tomb itself was never completed. Except that there is a sarcophagus, and in it there must have been a pharaoh's coffin. Surely all you've got to do now, Inspector, is to find the scoundrel who planned all this. Do you refer to Lieutenant Barclay, the deserter? Isn't it obvious? Perhaps. But maybe we will know more after we have been to speak with Miss Warwick. Miss Warwick? What's she got to do with it now? My friend, even a thief knows that in order to find a fortune, you must first have someone who can recognize it. I think we must go quickly to the hotel. Uh, Dr. Fawzad, if these people, whoever they are, if they did get away with that coffin, what would be its worth? Mr. Wilder, on a quiet day, 25th November, 1922, the heart of the world stopped beating when two of your countrymen, Lord Carnarvon and Mr. Howard Carter, looked for the first time onto the golden face of a young pharaoh. Now today, Tutankhamun is at peace. The world can only come to look and to stare. No, Mr. Wilder, there is no money that would buy a pharaoh. All right, pay them off. Each man 200 piastres, not a penny more. Is not enough. What do you mean it's not enough? You are not only paying these men for their work. You are paying them for their silence. I've never bought anyone's silence. Perhaps you have never stolen a pharaoh's coffin before. There! I hope it chokes you. Now get them out of here. We're leaving. Leaving? He is not sunset for another hour. Precisely. But what about the people waiting for us in Asia? All the arrangements. It's not our problem to worry about the arrangements, Yassif. We go to Cairo, not Hazia. What? what sort of game are you playing? You planned this, didn't you? You are going to leave Elizabeth alone with the dervishes, aren't you? Your own sister! Oh, stop preaching at me, will you? 
You've got a job to do, Yassif, and if you don't want to do it, you can stay behind and rot with your ancestors in the valley. Listen. Listen to me, Michael, please. You have no hope of getting to Cairo with that coffin. If the police follow Elizabeth to that village... Can't you get it into your thick head that it doesn't matter if they do? What? By that time, we'll all be in Cairo. You, me, Pringle, and one pharaoh. You understand? I only understand that if anything goes wrong, we are going to be put up against a wall and shot down like animals. Then that's where you're wrong, my friend, because we're not going to get caught. And do you know why? Because it's not our job to worry how something is going to be done. That's been taken care of. We don't give orders, Yassif. We obey them. So it's up to you. You'd better make up your mind once and for all. Are you coming with us? Or aren't you? Not in her room. Don't they know where she's gone? At the reception desk over there. They think Miss Warwick had not been in hotel for over one hour. Well, perhaps she's gone into the town to do some shopping. Perhaps. But now we must be quick. As soon as possible, Miss Warwick must be put under arrest. Arrest? What the devil for? I have told you, for her own protection, Mr. Wilder. I believe she is now in even more danger than before. But why? Because she is unfortunate enough to be the only expert the two robbers can trust. Do you mean she's deliberately working for them? No, no, but in her efforts to prove her father's theory. She is unconsciously helping someone to earn a fortune. The Pharaoh's identity? Precisely, my friend. That is why we have to stop her before she's able to do this. Well, yes, but tell me how. Apart from Barclay and Pringle, we don't even know how many people are mixed up in all this. How many? I think it would be more useful to know the name of just one person. One? Someone who has been working out such a plan for years. Someone we could trust. A person who we would not think twice about. Perhaps even a respected member of our community. Inspector. Inspector Mahmoud. Yes, Mrs. Barclay. Oh, what's happened? Please. Please tell me what's happened. My husband's been gone for over 24 hours now. You must have some news. I am sorry, Mrs. Barclay. My men have been searching the hills for many hours. They can find nothing. But they must. Charlie's out there somewhere. I can assure you we do everything possible. Oh, yes, I'm sure you do. But you let that girl get away, don't you? Which girl? Oh, don't try and fool me. I know very well Elizabeth Warwick is mixed up in all this. She knows what's happened to my son. Mrs. Barclay, have you seen Miss Warwick in the last hour? Yes, I have seen her. Where? Well, I can't remember anyway. Who cares? Mrs. Barclay, I think I should warn you. If you want to see your son again, you had best to tell us what have happened to Miss Warwick. She's gone out to that village. Village? What village? Hasia? That's the place. I saw her just before her friend came to pick her up. Friend? What was his name? I don't remember. Then for heaven's sake, try. I tell you, I... Oh, that school teacher. O'Hara? Yes. Quick, Mr. Wilder, we must go to the village of Hasia before it is too late. But why? To save the life of Miss Warwick. You have forgotten, my friend. Tonight, the dervish begins to dance. Keep your head down, Elizabeth. For heaven's sake, don't let them see us. All these villagers are members of the whirling dervishes. They are a law only to themselves. They'd kill us both if they knew we were here. You look so strange, just standing there in a circle. Are they the ones who actually perform the dance? Yes. Do you see? There are 12 of them. The idea is that each represents a different world. For a few minutes, they'll just stand there. They won't even move a muscle. And then, gradually, they sink into a kind of unconsciousness. The beginning of the trance. Yes. From then on, they surrender their minds completely to the will of Allah. One man will start the chant, and that's the signal for the dance to begin. The music, it's so weird. You've heard nothing yet. Once it gets going, you think it'll never end. Each dancer will start to scream, to yell, spinning on his feet like a top. I hate this village. I feel as though I'm going to stifle. Mr. O'Hara, can't we move back a little further? No. But there's no sign of my Keep cult. still. We're too late. What is it? Can't you see? Over there, the man on the left. He's raising his head. This is it, Elizabeth. This is it. The dervishes are beginning to move.
turn that row off. Why do we have to go the long way around? We should follow the river. All the way to Cairo? No, that's precisely what a lot of people would like us to do. Then we'd be a sitting target for every soldier in the country. At least this way we can do most of the journey under cover of dark. Maybe, but I still don't think we should... Police! What? Where? Dead ahead. Look! Can't you see? He's just stepping onto the road, into the headlights! Pull up. I told you, I told you! I said pull up! coming towards us. Keep your mouth shut. But if he looks in the back of the lorry... Shut! Where are you going? What are you going to do? Just stay where you are. <laughs> you fool! Do you know what you have done? Let's go. You'll have every policeman and soldier on our trail within the next hour. We don't stand a chance it's now. It's quite all right, Yassif. I have five bullets left. If necessary, I'm quite prepared to use every one of them. Now, let's go. What are they doing? Whatever you do, Elizabeth, don't say a word. One false move from us, and we're both dead. But there's no sign of my color forehead. This is the heart of the ceremony, Elizabeth. The sacred rites. What's happened to them? Why aren't they here? Look at the dancers. They're peering into a life after death. I want to go. A life where there is no death. Mr. O'Hara, please. A life where there's only glory and splendor. They'll hear us. A pharaoh's life, Elizabeth. What? What are you saying? Didn't you hear what I said? I said, a pharaoh! Mr. Lohan, they've seen us. They're coming towards us. No, no. But is O'Hara mad or something? Taking Elizabeth out to that village on the night the dervishes danced. Mad? No, I don't think so, my friend. Mr. O'Hara, I've lived in the country for many years. He knows the people maybe even better than me. But why take her out there? Who knows? Perhaps to look for a pharaoh. Well, do you think Elizabeth is being helped by O'Hara? He was a friend of Sir Richard. So was Fuad Yassif. We know what happened to him. No, my friend, that is the point. I'm afraid we do not know. But what we do know is that Miss Warwick has something as valuable as perhaps the pharaoh itself. Such as? Knowledge, my friend. Knowledge. Which somebody's trying to buy. Or to take. But who? Who would be willing to sacrifice somebody's life for the sake of a coffin full of old bones? All of us, Mr. Wilder, believe me. Soldier, policeman, archaeologist, diplomat, yes, and even schoolteacher. If you break the trance... He can't be in a trance. His eyes are wide open. He can't see you, I promise. But he knows you're there. He's in a different world, Elizabeth. A different life. And you are on the outside, looking in. What's he trying to do? Perfectly still But he's going to touch my face. Please, don't let him... Don't bring him back to life, Elizabeth. Don't do it. I can't bear this. We are in the middle of the circle. We have to obey the will of Allah. We must... No, I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. Well, Inspector, where are they all? I thought you said the dervishes were dancing here. I think not. There will be no more dervish dancing in this village tonight. Everything's so quiet, so still... Where have they gone? What the... Quickly, over there. It's a signal. My men have found something. Where? Where? Uh, 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 Good heavens, it's uh, Villas. He's been beaten up. Uh, Look at the state of him. Uh, Mr. Villas, uh, Mr. Uh, Villas, uh, can you hear me? Uh, How did he get in this boat? It was me. You? I bring him here. Ahmed Arabi. Are you responsible for this? Oh, no, Mr. Wilder. No, Mr. No, no, no. 
I went with this lady to look for her husband in the valley. He was near some rocks, very sick. The soldiers have been looking for this man all day. But you knew exactly where to go, didn't you? No, mister, no. At first I was not happy to go into hills alone. These people have bring Ahmed much trouble. But, but then Abdullah, he was killed. Abdullah was my friend. Charlie, Charlie. Uh, Maggie, listen. Gotta stop looking for Brian. He's dead. I know, I know. That boy up there, he's not Brian. Uh, uh, too late. It's all right, Charlie. Uh, Don't worry. Uh, I know. I think I've always known. But I have to be really sure. Will you ever forgive me, Maggie, for all these years? We must forget uh, now. We'll go home, Charlie. Home. You and me. We've got each other. Maggie, I do love you. I, I need, I need... You've got to believe of course, me. Charlie. Uh, Mr. Villas, can you tell us what happened? I, I, I went, went up there. Yes, yes, Mr. Uh, Villas. Where did you go? They tried to kill me. They left me to die. I managed to follow Pringle to hut. Heard them talking. Who? Who did you hear? Pringle and and and, and? and a school teacher. School teacher, uh, Mr. O'Hara. Uh, I thought so. Then he's the one who's uh, responsible. Miss Warwick, in great danger. They're taking her. Uh, yes. Where, well, my friend? To where are they taking Miss Warwick? Uh, the, uh, the city. What? The city of the dead. City of the dead. What does uh, that mean? It means, my friend, that the pharaoh has uh, gone to the city of death in Cairo. Cairo? But we must stop them. I'm afraid we are too late, my friend. You see, Mr. O'Hara have disappeared from the village, and with him he have taken Miss Elizabeth Warwick. When the Dervish Begins to Dance was the seventh episode of Kill the Pharaoh, a thriller serial in eight parts by Victor Pemberton. Elizabeth Warwick was played by Sheila Grant, and production for the BBC was by John Tideman. <laughs>